Now that Valve's BCI research or brain controlling interface research has gone public in a GDC talk conducted by Michael Ambinder, I asked for opinions on the report I published yesterday on all of this information, as I do feel that this is incredibly important research that is going on right now. Whether or not it's actually going to do anything for video games, this seems like this seems like with a lot of private funding, Valve may be able to do some good within society for people with disabilities. However, the way Valve packaged this information makes it seem like they really think this stuff can have a lot of good in the video game industry. So I gathered up all of the best stated opinions and feedback from my video, and this is what the community thinks about Valve's BCI research. Here we go. This video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. Introducing Raid Shadow Legends. Playing Raid is the most immersive experience you'll find on a smartphone, and it can only really be compared with the biggest PC and console titles. And the best part? It's totally free. Raid has all the features you'd expect from a brand new RPG title, like an amazing storyline, awesome 3D graphics, giant boss fights, PvP battles, and hundreds of champions to customize and collect. Raid is getting big real fast, so get in early. Starting now will give you a huge head start. There's also an upcoming special launch tournament with crazy in-game prizes and real-life physical prize packs. So go Go to the description of the video now and download Raid only through my links to get 50,000 silver immediately and a free epic champion as part of the new player program, courtesy of the dev team. See you there. As far as implants are concerned, we could have a meaningful conversation if there were other widely accepted use cases for implants, and games would just be adapting the tech people already have. But that's a far-flung, possibly fictional universe. We still need to have to get through a massive transhumanist debate, laws, ethics, and economic for base technology that may never be accepted for entertainment use. How would people feel having an implant that can read every waking or subconscious emotional state and then being asked to grant third-party access to that information on a digital level? The privacy concerns are daunting, let alone the theoretical technology, plus the risks of implantation and surgery. Even if we got the technology to this point, which is feasible, the likely practical use of any such technology would be for medical or military use. The vast civilian population wouldn't even be able to afford it. So it's a moot point to discuss Valve's implantation as anything other than than an interesting talking point from a purely theoretical perspective. I highly doubt that they are taking implantation as a serious strategy in any meaningful way. Now, for the non-invasive monitoring, there's already entertainment tech out there that primitively taps into this. It wouldn't be impossible to have an EEG or non-invasive monitor as part of a VR headset, and use that information gathered to be better informed about the player's state, engagement level, attention, that sort of thing. I can imagine a few silly use cases for this, such as if a player is not engaged with a cutscene and someone turns around and asks the player if they're paying attention. It could be useful for bettering immersion and provide active feedback to the game's engine, AI, and developers. But the cost involved would be demanding the information gathered have a useful way and is not a gimmick. Otherwise, the costs of VR headset would needlessly increase and developers would just be flooded with junk information. I think helmets seem easily viable, honestly. As soon as you said that it could adaptively improve gameplay, I was sold. Anything to increase immersion is the entire point of the game industry to me. If anything, I want to get to a point where it doesn't feel like I'm playing a game. I want that middleman cut out. The biggest problem with something like VR is that you are still having to input information into a game that isn't coming directly from your body. We can't walk using an analog stick in VR because it causes motion sickness. Imagine instead if your brain was directly controlling movements through one of those implants or helmets. It would be seamless. No nausea. The short barrier between thinking, translating the controls, doing it in game is probably the biggest reason games can't be fully immersive yet. That said, I think any sort of truly invasive implant won't happen for a long time. Too many regulations. And until it's confirmed very safe, would I ever consider? But I'd still do it. The biggest issue isn't necessarily with the technology, although it's obviously primitive and will have problems. Being able to do things like having a faster reaction time is good, as is having a game tailored to the player. The thing that rubs me the wrong way up until now is that data like EEG and other brain data has been strictly in the hands of medical professionals, only gathered when needed, and is subject to a lot of legal scrutiny. This likely wouldn't be the case with a consumer-grade, off the shelf EEG device, and I don't know how comfortable I am with companies getting their hands on data about my brain. Valve is relatively trustworthy, as they don't have a history of mismanaging their user data, and they seem to have a respect for their customers. But if this becomes a thing, I fully expect other, less reputable companies to start getting in on it. I expect at least one scandal involving brain data being stolen or sold. The importance of keeping brain data private is relevant based on how good the technology is. Ignoring moral questions for a moment, if I were to accept a brain chip in my head, I would need an unchanged 
interchangeable license agreement where any data collected would never be stored, collected, and above all, sold to third parties I was not aware of. It would have to be a device that cannot be remotely updated or hacked from an outside source, and it must be able to be turned off by the user, me, at any time I want. So, that's a highly unlikely situation. Sounds like an interesting idea. It seems that they make us a step closer to an alternate or simulated reality. The only thing I truly have a problem with is the ethical practice Valve would need to take. Sure, they can take game data if we had an implant, but how much data could they take if we were out of the game? Would they be able to sell that data to companies? Is there another way for companies to take our data? It's safe to say that if Google announced an implant like this, I'd not be buying. I'd be surprised if we see anything even rudimentary come of this in the next five years. I think it's an important area of research because humans simply don't understand a lot about the brain, which is kind of funny when you think about it. The fact that we don't understand the thing that we use to understand things. The research can lead to a broad range of application, but the fact is that without this technology, VR won't get much more immersive than it is today. Full dive VR is the only thing that can solve many issues with VR, such as the obvious fact that our bodies can't interact with the virtual world, so you can always move your hands inside of walls and such. Perhaps in the far future, there'd be a way to implant something on or near our brain with a procedure that is accessible, easy, and not very invasive. I don't think things like EEG will ever lead to anything more useful than hearing big events over the noise. I feel like having a chip in your brain, as cheesy as it sounds now, is an inevitable step in neuroscience and gaming. And for some reason, I feel like everyone would have a much worse reaction if a company like EA had announced this instead of Valve. I think that talking about a topic like this one is pretty useless right now. As I've stated multiple times, this is still the beginning. This is like trying to talk about the video game industry during the Tennis for Two era. There's always going to be people that will be involved with new technology, whether it's genuine interest in that specific product, wanting to be on the bleeding edge of technology, or wanting bragging rights. Google Glass comes to mind as an example. People paid exorbitant amounts of money for that product, having no real idea if it was going to be accepted or integrated into social norms. The same thing will be the case with the Generation 1 adopters of folding phones. These people are on the fringe and aren't what Valve wants or should want. They want the mass market. Valve needs to overcome these massive obstacles if they wish to achieve mass market penetration, functionality, cost, and safety. Let's start with the obvious and easiest. An implant is friggin' brain surgery. You don't just wake up one day and decide you want that. It's a major life event and Valve needs to ensure that it's safe for people to have this procedure done. Safe not in the sense that it's unlikely something will go wrong or in rare instances there are some side effects. The technology needs to be rock solid and flawless for there to be mass market adoption. Cost. This goes hand in hand with safety. Not getting into the less than ideal healthcare system of the United States, but there will be costs associated with this and they won't be insignificant. It'll likely be classified as an elective surgery so there will be minimal or no reimbursement or subsidiaries to ease the price burden. Hospitals are already short-staffed as it is, and this type of procedure is very specialized and requires a very specific people to perform, i.e. neurosurgeon. The installation of the interface will need to be brought into an exact science and function as a day surgery type of procedure, not requiring an operating room, not requiring a hospital, not requiring a significant recovery period. It needs to be able to be something that can be done in a commercial office with significantly less trained medical professionals. Functionality. Lastly, there needs to be an incentive to go through this burdensome experience. Simply getting it to be able to play Half-Life 3 isn't going to be enough. The functionality of the device needs to be deep, broad, and extremely relevant to daily life. This will require Valve to either be acquired by a significantly larger corporation, or make extremely massive partnerships with a broad range of companies in a broad range of industries. Want to start your electric vehicle? You can just think about it. Tweet just by thinking about it? Know whose birthday it is on Facebook when you wake up in the morning? Realize you need more toilet paper and thinking about it triggers Amazon to automatically order it? Unless a device such as this adds a deep, fundamental, life-altering, significant quality of life improvement, people don't want it. This may be a step too far for most normal people. I worry about the stuff I install on my computer when the desktop icons flash after install, and the worst that can happen on one of these mistakes is a computer losing files, passwords, or maybe even money in the far end. Something goes wrong in a two-way brain implant system? What can happen? An error message or 20 amps into my frontal cortex? If the debate is now, what are people putting on my PC without me knowing, who, apart from the tech and most devoted would open up the situation directly into my brain. I think they're aware of the possible difficulty of convincing people just to smack a piece of metal between their lobes. From a lot of this, it sounds like they're speaking in hypotheticals, and don't know exactly what their plan to do with this is yet. I could see them pushing the concept of neurotech, but not only to consumers, but other companies. Make the chip something not necessarily proprietary, so it's not like any one company owns it. This being both for the fact that it would raise incentive to help normalize the idea of chips, possibly even with the promise of practical applications like an electronic fingerprint you always have. It's going to be an uphill battle. It's going to be an uphill battle no 
matter what. From a relative perspective, sci-fi like Deus Ex has explored the difficulty of augmenting humans and a device that can, so far as we read our emotions and collect information on how we individually react to everything when selling that information to companies is a lot scarier than the mechanical limbs we expected to come first. This sounds like an evolution of what Valve was thinking about 15 years ago when they proposed to make a game that would react to your heart rate and sweat release. Obviously, that turned into the AI director of Left 4 Dead, but man, can you imagine what they would do in 15 years? I don't know if I even want to imagine it. The wackier Valve gets and further away from games, the more I think they're never a company solely focused on games. First, they tried to solve piracy by making Steam a preferable service, then they worked on a bunch of other shit with Left 4 Dead, Half-Life 2, Dota 2, VR stuff, and other hardware. They are problem solvers, not traditional game makers at this point. I also don't understand why this is controversial. If people wear these helmets, of course Valve will read their minds. While watching the video, I was thinking about how something like this could actually be useful to making games, instead of playing them. It's like super detailed focus testing. And after that, it might become more of an enthusiast consumer thing and eventually more mainstream. Remember that this also ties to a lot of the holy grail of making a completely AI-driven game and brain interfacing may be the last piece of the puzzle and how to make that type of experience even deeper. Shit's crazy. Seems like a load of crap to me. This won't improve game development in the slightest. The greatest narrative and interactive experiences were born from passion and the mastery of the craft. What needed to be learned about game design was already learned and then forgotten in the pursuit of broader demographics. The greatest gaming experiences in history were made with the expectation that not everybody would like them. They were not made to perfectly suit the audience. You don't need adaptive gameplay and brain telemetry to make a good game. The AI director in Left 4 Dead was fancy and all, but it wasn't what made the game successful. What made the game successful was the level design, weapon balance, and co-op interactions shaped by the game's core rules. In the end, these technologies will have better uses elsewhere. In gaming, they'll be a gimmick. Valve is either pulling a very elaborate big brain 200 IQ play here and is 15 steps ahead of the competition thinking beyond next-gen consoles, the future of Steam, and even the future of VR, or they just said, fuck it, brain chips. But in all seriousness, I feel like Valve has reached a point where it's extremely difficult to tell whether they know exactly what they're doing or if they're just throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what sticks. And I feel like this uncomfortable ambiguity could easily be solved by just communicating with people more clearly and more often. Like, imagine if they had announced that they were looking into BCI research way back when the Vibe first launched, and instead of keeping mostly quiet about it, they regularly updated over the years about about findings, building up to this presentation and GDC. Sure, the idea would sound ludicrous, but at least we would have the time and knowledge to form a solid opinion on it. I believe Gabe when he says it's closer than most people think. There's essentially nothing stopping external solutions from happening aside from the design and production work, devs needing the tools to make use of this stuff, and people not wanting it. An easy way to negate the controversies of the implant. Start with people who wouldn't be able to play otherwise, those with disabilities, missing limbs, cognitive setbacks, etc. When it's shown that a person with a physical ability is not only able to play games sufficiently, but could potentially potentially compete or downright demolish the competition, that is, using traditional methods of user input, people would be lining up to get the implants. If the game that is then too cool not to play comes out, and it's either enhanced by such an input method or is exclusive to such input methods, it would be the next step in getting folks to not only willingly agree to have the procedure done, but to pay out of pocket. Throw in a few other quality of life features, such as shopping, reminders, body regulation, mood enhancement, etc., then it's a done deal. Look how far people have come when it comes to just clicking the I accept button on the bottom of a EULA page. Look how much people already don't care about the invasion of privacy with their Alexa speakers, Cortana on their PC, and Siri in their phones, always listening. Human data collection and thought control is best implemented when the subject is positively reinforced to do so. That will net the more consistent and robust data than the subject who are coerced into it. If you can make money while doing it, even better, right? I'm not sure how to feel about this. Wetware is pretty advanced and potentially dangerous tech. I wouldn't feel comfortable having anything implanted inside of me or outside solely because I don't want the game to rule my life and put me in danger so that there's less lag time. However, I think the technology could be tremendously useful in other fields, such as potential treatment for mental illness. It's going to take a lot of time until society accepts this technology. The moment Valve tries to actually implement this technology, the entire medical science community is not going to let them do it until they're 100% sure it's safe. And proving the safety of this kind of technology is going to take years, and even then it'll still take time for society to accept it. Basically, this research has just begun, and most likely it's not as amazing as it looks right now. So Valve will not try to implement this technology until it's actually worth to fight society for its approval. But the prospect of being able to communicate with your PC using your mind alone sure sounds nice. I think it's going to be a common thing at some point in the future.